Hey y'all, Data Guy here, and today I am making a little comparison video uh, between Airflow and one of the hot new competitors on the market, which is Mageshot AI. Uh, funnily enough, someone already had the reason I have this thumbnail up is someone already used my uh, reused my thumbnail to make a video on this exact topic. That wasn't me, um, so I figured it's only fair to do the exact same thing. Uh, but anyways, what we're going to go through here today is first covering. Airflow, just the basics in case you're not familiar with it, what it's good for, covering mage.ai, what it's designed for, why it came onto the scene, how it kind of builds itself as the Airflow replacement, and then really talk about the pros and cons, both with an eye on saying, hey, can we validate this claim by mage.ai that they are truly a better uh, competitor to, to Airflow? Um, because Airflow's got big shoes to fill, so I'm not quite sold yet, but what we're going to go through in this video is really just look at the facts and decide, give you a framework for deciding, hey, uh, is Mage actually better than Airflow? Is it good for my particular use case? Um, because the answer may surprise you. Um, without further ado, let's get into it. So first, starting off with Airflow, Airflow is an open source scheduler for managing complex workflows. Um, it relies on a Python-based, dynamic, uh, extensible framework um, where you can really just plug and play with any kind of dependency, any kind of package, any kind of requirement, uh, and connect to really almost any resource because of the flexibility it offers you in designing and standardizing your own connectors. Um, and it's got a couple of key components underlying it. You, know, you have your scheduler that monitors, triggers all your tasks and DAGs, triggers task instances when dependencies have been met. You have an executor that determines you know, how workers actually execute tasks, a metadata base for storing and passing information between tasks, and then your task nodes, which is typically a Kubernetes-based environment that provides a scalable uh, workflow orchestration pool of nodes that can trigger, run jobs, um, process data, really do almost anything. Um, and then you also have this web server, which you're looking at here, which is just the actual interface uh, for building your DAGs, which stands for Directed Acyclic Graphs, uh, you know, where each DAG represents a collection of tasks. And you're seeing a very basic one here. Um, and this just is a super customizable and uh, integratable tool into almost every data stack and gives you a single pane of glass across all of your various subsystems. Um, you know, you can go things like, hey, I want to pull data from an API, store it in some container blob storage, uh, then upload it into a Snowflake database, run some dbt jobs on it. Um, it really, the, the use cases are, are nearly endless, um, and it's an open source project that's really started to pick up a lot of steam now in the ML and AI age because it's Python based. Most ML and AI frameworks are also Python native, um, and so they work really well together, especially since Airflow provides a scalable way to monitor and manage the many hundreds, if not thousands, of pipelines and workflows you need to do uh, to run ML workloads at scale. Um, so really great tool that's, you know, obviously had a lot of acceptance in the market, especially over the past couple of years. So mage.ai uh, is a newer tool that is really focused on simplicity and also ease of use, um, and is also designed for machine learning workflows as well and making them kind of easy. Um, and so its architecture is designed to be data centric. So if I go, you know, create, let's say a template, um, there's no templates that are made. Okay. Um, but let's see, if we have any example pipelines here. So if I go into a pipeline, you'll see it's got somewhat similar uh, building kind of tools to Airflow, um, but it is more of a GUI driven approach. So whereas Airflow is really Python native, and you know, calling out to external systems. You can kind of see here with Mage, you have more of a Jupyter Notebook style interface uh, where it's meant to, you know, it can call out to external systems, load data, but you're meant to do a lot of the processing, a lot of the work actually within uh, mage.ai. Um, and so it allows users to define their you know, code using Python, using SQL, um, and it's great for data science tools um, because you know, typically with data science, you wanna have a script like process data, have everything done in a single uh, kind of script. So it's good for you know, when a data scientist wants to come in and build uh, their own pipeline without nearly needing to know the you know, true framework underneath it and you know, the scheduling and determining all the dependencies, they just kind of have a simplified work, uh, workspace. And then also, it's a fully managed product typically. Um, so there is open source, you can deploy this on yourself, but I think a lot of people are going with the managed execution environment where you have you know, an automated orchestrate or container 
pool underneath here and resource management and kind of abstract the uh, deployment and scaling side of things. Um, and then you also have relatively straightforward user interface, you know, just kind of all in one. Um, you know, I can go in here to look at pipeline runs. I have this dashboard. Uh, and it, it's good for a single user. You know, it's good for, hey, I just want to come in. I want to have a place where I can run my experiments um, all within a single location. I, you know, don't really need to interact with or manipulate a lot of other systems. It's all just kind of, you know, you kind of see an example workflow here. You just are loading some data from an API. You're doing some processing. You're then you're sending an output somewhere. All pretty typical, uh, you know, data science workflows. Um, so just wanted to give you kind of a guideline. You know, it's it's... Definitely, you lose some of the complexity that Airflow brings, um, which is either for better or worse. You know, it, you don't need to define all the dependencies, but at the same time, you might not have the same flexibility in defining dependencies, defining linkages between different tasks and, and DAGs that Airflow offers and allows you to develop those more complex workflows. Um, so to kind of illustrate that, I want to go into now a section today of the basics, talk about the development experience on Airflow and the development experience on Mage.ai. Now, when it comes to developer experience, Airflow is really based in you know, local development, having your own uh, instance of Airflow set up so you can test locally, iterate quickly, um, and you can see you have a lot of things templated. So you know things like, hey, I want to connect to and pull data from API, API, then I can use an HTTP sensor, or I want to uh, send some data from a local file system to S3 or between databases, or interact with an external database. Um, you have templatized way of doing that and you also have the ability to you know run just typical python tasks so it's really just a templatized script um, you can put parameters in it like here you, know, you see stock data so and then what airflow layers on top of this by allowing you to you know pretty easily call these dags from an api uh, send data through them uh, as parameters and so you can kind of have like a form driven approach to and your data scheduling and your data pipelines which can make them a lot more dynamic um, and so pretty simple developer experience if you're used to developing this way. If you're used to writing on your own, you know, developing your own scripts, uh, developing in Python, it's really intuitive. But if you're not, there's a bit of a learning curve, both to, you know, obviously learning Python, but then also the way Airflow defines tasks it takes a little bit of logic to kind of think, hey, all right, so I'm defining all these tasks, I'm defining this logic between them. You can kind of see the bitmapping down here. I have to fill out all these requirements. Um, calling output between tasks isn't the most intuitive thing in the world. So there's a lot of kind of intricacy within Airflow that you really need to, you know, learn over time to become a true, truly effective with it. Um, and so that's why there's a bit of a learning curve with Airflow before you, know, you actually get the full value out of it. Now, the developer experience with Mage is a bit simpler. I like to think of it as like, hey, what Jupyter notebooks are to Python scripts, Mage.ai uh, pipelines are to Airflow. Um, and so here you have, you know, a way to pretty easily just add new pipelines, you know, whether I want to add a Python pipeline or a SQL pipeline, I can add a connection to one of these types of databases. Um, and, you know, it's relatively simple for a new person to use. Um, so, you know, adding things like a, so if you're using R, again, a data science common tool that is, uh, you know, used a lot within Mage.ai, whereas R is pretty rarely used within Airflow because Airflow is more designed for data engineering rather than kind of data science workflows. Um, so you can see here, you know, you can get some of these templates. They're really just templatized Python scripts, which at the end of the day, that's what Airflow operators are too. too. Um, and so if you're not as comfortable with writing your own code from scratch, this can be an advantageous development workflow because, hey, you don't actually need to write and define all these relationships. It's kind of automated for you. But what you gain in ease of use, you kind of lose in customizability. Um, you don't have as rich kind of logical options for determining you know, relationships between tasks. As you can see, you, know, you have these one parent relationships. Um, it's not really as easy to define those intricate relationships that Airflow excels at. Uh, things like data-driven scheduling, breaking away from time-based or even just dependency-based um, and making truly decoupled pipelines, Mage is going to struggle to do. But if you're new to this world of creating data pipelines, if you're coming from a primarily data science or uh, data analyst background, this might be an easier kind of zero to one to get you developing quicker. Um, so it's a good tool for beginners, but I think that once you kind of reach a certain point, you'll start running into the, the same complex uh, common issues that people have problems with, with GUI-based tools. There's just, the level of ease makes it more difficult when you want to do more complex things. Because 
to build out a UI for all the complex relationships and everything that you can define in code, because the ultimate customizability is code, um, it is really difficult and, and borderline impossible without just making an interface that is almost as equally complicated as just writing it all in code. Um, so it's, it's a tough problem to solve. And so I see where Major is going here, where they wanted to make this easier for you know new developers to come in, people that are used to kind of more data science type workflows. Uh, but I, I do think it just struggles when you get to enterprise grade data engineering type workflows. So in terms of pros and cons, now that we kind of have an idea of how both each work, the approach to development, and what they're well suited for, pros and cons of Airflow. Number one with the pros, it's highly customizable and extensible. It's got over you know, 1,400 connectors. There's more added every day. And if there isn't a connector, you can build it yourself really easily. There's a f massive, massive community. You have a massive ecosystem. You got a lot of companies that are driven and incentivized to make their own operators because it will bring them uh, a certain subset of those Airflow customers that might want to use it. Uh, and it's really ideal for complex dependency-driven workflows. Um, and not only that, but dependency-driven workflows at scale, um, where you need to manage hundreds, if not thousands, of pipelines. Uh, but on the cons is you have you know, a bit of a steeper learning curve due to its flexibility and feature richness. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot of different intricacies to really get the most out of it. And it also requires more setup and maintenance. Uh, you know, developing really good CLN logic is difficult on your own, which is why you should probably go with a managed service like Astronomer. Uh, but it, you know, if you're trying to run an open, an open source Airflow yourself, it does require a good amount of expertise. Now, on the Mage AI side of things, pros, easier to set up and use. It's, you know, especially for beginners, I think it's really well suited for data scientists, data engineer, or data analysts who want kind of data pipelines light, you know, automated scripts that they can schedule and run. But, and, you know, that has good integration with machine learning libraries, sorry, I won't start the butt yet, um, and just less overhead and complexity in actually managing and running those pipelines. Unfortunately, with the cons is that it's much less mature and it's much less extensible to just like the whole wide dataverse. And you can kind of see that in the example where you really only have I'll say, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, say you have 100 connections. You still only have 10% of the options that Airflow has, and you also don't really have a framework that's super extensible for developing your own operators. You know, yes, you can make your own Python scripts, make your own templates, um, but it's a lot less shareable and scalable than Airflow, where, you know, you can really just have an operator that many different hundreds of pipelines can use, and you have the, you know, parameterization and templatization on top of that, um, where it's abstracted away, you don't have to, when you use a template, you don't have to pull in the entire script into your pipeline and then run it that way. You actually have a lot of that abstracted away, which makes the interface and actually interacting with these pipelines a lot cleaner. Um, so I think, you know, you really just lose the flexibility that you, it is the sacrifice you make for the ease of use with Mage. Um, you know, it could be, uh, it, it can be a really great you know, intro tool to, to start building our data pipelines, but once you get to a certain scale, once you get a certain level of complexity, it just is going to become in, unwieldy and introduce more friction than it's actually saving you. So in terms of like ideal use cases for each, I think Airflow is really best suited for complex data pipelines and robust scalable scheduling and orchestration, and it's ideal for enterprises, companies that have a bunch of different systems they need to manage, things like data lakes, databases, traditional uh, software tools, and it, it can really be adapted to almost any use case on the enterprise grade. Versus I think Mage is really just kind of focused on making AI, uh, or making ML, which is really just advanced data science, making ML pipelines and data pipelines accessible to the larger data analysts and data science community. So I think if you know, you're know you right now writing everything in Jupyter Notebooks and then you know struggling to run these scripts on your computer, I think Mage.ai provides a cleaner UI than that. But I think once you get to the scale of needing to run you know dozens, hundreds of pipelines, or you just need to interact with a lot of external tools, that's where Mage is going to start to struggle and then you're gonna to wanna to look for more advanced tools like Airflow. Uh, but anyways, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.